opening this bone fragment was smaller than a child's, but it belonged to a fully grown adult, and what it revealed about the smallest humans who ever lived would terrify scientists around the world. Six Mirzomur, beneath the limestone cave floor on the remote island of Sores, something impossible waited in the darkness, but the discovery that changed everything. Before we reveal what made that tiny bone so terrifying, you need to know about the discovery that started it all. September the 2003, Benjamin Terrace was about to make a find so shocking that scientists would spend the next two decades arguing about whether it was even possible the tropical afternoon heat pressed down on being Pua Cave as this Indonesian archaeologist scraped away another layer of ancient sediment. He had been digging this two-meter square for weeks, descending deeper into geological time with each careful stroke of his trowel. The team was actually preparing to close the excavation when Terrace hit something. Hard, a piece of skull emerged from the earth. At first, everyone assumed it belonged to a child. The brain case was so small, so delicate, that no adult human could possibly fit inside, but as the team carefully exposed more of the skull over the following days, something disturbing became clear. The teeth weren't baby teeth. They were fully developed, permanent adult teeth. This was no child. This was a grown woman, and she was impossible. Small when the excavation was complete, the skeleton revealed a human being. Unlike any other, she stood barely three feet tall. Her brain was the size of a large orange, smaller than a chimpanzee yet. Scattered around her bones were sophisticated stone tools and the butcher remains of dwarf elephants. She had hunted the scientific world erupted in controversy. How could something so small with such a tiny brain be capable of making tools and organizing hunts? The skeleton was so extraordinary that many experts refused to believe it represented a new species at all. But LB1, as she came to be known, was just the beginning. But here's what the orbits world. Nobody tells you about where these tiny humans lived. Imagine waking up every day knowing that stepping outside your cave meant facing creatures that could kill you in seconds. This wasn't some peaceful island paradise. This was a death trap where evolution had created monsters, giant rats the size of dogs secured through forests alongside monitor wizards, longer than crocodiles, Komodo dragoons. Earth's largest living wizard stalked prey with venomous bites, and in this land of giants lived the smallest humans ever to walk the planet. The woman we call LB1 lived in a world that would terrify modern humans. Komodo dragoons, 10 feet long, shared her cases and hunting grounds. These worm weren't the sluggish reptile tourist. See today, but apex predator capable of bringing down water buffalo. Their bones litter the same cave layers where LB1's people lived, suggesting an uneasy coexistence between the smallest humans and largest wizards. Yet somehow these tiny humans thrive. They made elegant stone tools, organized group hunts, and survived in this dangerous ecosystem for hundreds of thousands of years. They developed technique for hunting stegodon, relatives of elephants that had also shrunk on the isolated island, but still stood twice the height of their human hunters. LB's people dubbed Domofluorescensis, but nicknamed Hobbies. After Golden's sectional characters represented something unprecedented in human evolution, Never before had scientists discovered humans so small, yet so capable. But the mystery of their origins remained unsolved. Where did they come from? How did they become so small and perhaps most intriguing? Were they always this tiny? The story that emerged echoes in the present. From these fossil fragments, read like science fiction, Yet the evidence was undesirable around one million years ago. A group of Domo rectus had ye somehow crossed the treacherous waters, separating Indonesia's islands from the mainland. These weren't sophisticated ocean-going vessels they used, 
but likely accidental journeys on natural rafts of vegetation torn loose by storms. The survivor who washed ashore on sores found themselves wrapped on an island with limited resources and no large predator to fear. In such environment, evolution favors smaller body sizes, less food is needed to survive, reproduction can occur. Earlier, energy isn't wasted, maintaining unnecessarily large frames. Here's the crazy part that blue scientists' minds normally when animals get strange on islands. They shrink slowly over hundreds of thousands of years. Think of it like a diet that takes forever to work. But these humans, they basically went from NBA player height to toller size in what evolutionary speaking was like. Losing weight overnight, the habit's transformation was extraordinary. Even by these standards, starting from ancestors, who likely stood 5'12 feet tall, they had shrunk to barely 3 feet in what appears to be a remarkably short evolutionary time span. The Mayanga discoveries revealed that this dramatic size reduction occurred within the first 300,000 years of their island existence. Then astonishing, they maintained these tiny proportions for at least 600, zeros and more years without further change. But why such extreme miniaturization? The answer lay in the unique challenges of their island home. Life on the edge flares was no tropical paradise. This volcanic island, with its limited freshwater sources and seasonal food shortage, demanded adaptations that pushed the boundaries of what it meant to be human. For the hobbies, being small wasn't just an advantage, it was essential for survival. Think about this for a second, while our ancestors needed massive amounts of food and space. These tiny humans had basically hacked survival-dense forests that would trap you or me. They could slip through like shadows, famine that would kill larger humans. They just needed a fraction of the food to survive their reduced body mass, meant they could support larger populations in areas with limited resources. Every aspect of their biology had been optimized for their specific environment. Yet despite their small brains, these people were remarkably sophisticated. The stone tools found at both Madame and Being. Pua demonstrate complex planning and technical skill. They weren't simple hand axes, but carefully drafted implements designed for specific tasks. Cutting wood, processing plant fibers, bothering meat. The evidence suggests they organized group hunts for Stegodon, requiring coordination and communication between multiple individuals. They may have used fire, though. This evidence remains debated. They certainly processes their kills efficiently, leaving behind precisely cut bone fragments that speak to detailed knowledge of anatomy. Most remarkably, they accomplished all of this with brains, one third the size of modern human brains. The vanishing, for nearly one million years, the hobbies ruled their island domain generation after generation adapted to Sores' unique challenges, maintaining their tiny stature while developing increasingly sophisticated survival strategics. They were living proof that human na uh, success didn't require large bodies or massive brains. But here's where the story takes a dark turn that'll make you question everything about human nature after nearly a million years of successful survival. Something happened that wiped these incredible people off the face of the earth in just a few thousand years. And the timing of their disappearance points to one terrifying possibility. The timing coincides with the arrival of modern humans in Southeast Asia. Our ancestors had developed boat building technologies sophisticated enough to cross the water barriers that had isolated florists for millions of years. Within a few thousand years of modern human arrival in the region, the hobbies were gone. Whether our species directly caused their extinction remains unknown. No evidence of warfare or conflict has been found. Instead, the hobbies may have fallen victim to the diseases modern humans carried or been outdue, completed for the same resources they might have been, absorbed through interbreeding. Though no genetic evidence of this has been discovered, the final layers of being Pua have tell a simple story 
First habit bones and tools, then volcanic ash. From a massive eruption, then modern human artifacts, the smallest humans ever to live had been replaced by the most successful, the legacy of giants and dwarfs. But the orbit story isn't over. In fact, what scientists discovered next would prove that these tiny humans were just the tip of an iceberg that completely changes how we think about what it means to be human. The discovery of home fluorescences forced scientists to reconsider fundamental assumptions about human evolution. We had always assumed that bigger brains led to greater intelligence, that larger bodies indicated evolutionary success, that our particular path to humanity was inevitable. The hobbies proved otherwise. They demonstrated that intelligence could flourish in unexpected forms, that success could be measured in survival rather than size, that the human story was far more complex and wonderful than we had imagined. Recent discoveries have only deepened. These insight in 2019, scientists announced another small-bodied human species, Domo lucinensis, from the Philippines. These people were even smaller than the hobbies, suggesting that island dwarfing may have been a common strategy for early humans who reached Southeast Asia's isolated islands. The DNA studies that might answer remaining questions about the hobbies, relationships to other human species, remain elusive. The tropical climate of Sores has destroyed any genetic material that might have been preserved in their bones. They remain mysterious, known only through the stones they shaped and the bones they left behind. Echoes in the present today, tourists can visit Being Puahave and peer into the excavation pits where the hobbies once lived. Local legends speak of small forest people called Ebugogo who lived alongside. Human communities until recent times, whether these stories preserve actual memories of encounters with the last hobbies or represent separate traditions remains unknown. The cave itself continues to yield secrets. Each excavation season brings new fossil fragments, new stone tools, new insight into how these remarkable people lived. The current inhabitants of Sores, including the Rampasa people who are notably small in stature themselves, have no genetic connection to the ancient hobbies. Their size appears to be a separate adaptation to similar environmental pressure. Meanwhile, the search for other small-bodied human species continues across Southeast Asia's thousands of islands. Each remote location might harbor its own chapter in humanity's diverse evolutionary story. Each excavation might uncover evidence of other paths our ancestors took in response to isolation and environmental challenge. The orbit story reminds us that human evolution was never a simple progression from small to large, primitive to advanced. Instead, it was an explosion of diversity with different populations, finding radically different solutions to the challenge of survival. In a world where modern humans have grown taller and heavier with each generation, where we quite size with success and complexity. With intelligence, the smallest humans who ever lived offer a fumbling reminder they survived nearly one million years in one of Earth's most challenging environment. They developed technologies, organized societies, and carved out a successful existence with the tools we might consider primitive and bodies we might consider inadequate. So here's what keeps me up at night, thinking about these tiny humans. They survived nearly a million years in hell on Earth with brains the size of oranges and bodies smaller than modern 10-year-old. Which makes me wonder what does that say about us? What would we be capable of if we faced the same impossible odds? They, uh, were masters of a world where being small was the ultimate evolutionary advantage. And in their tiny bones lies proof that the human story is far from over, that evolution continues to surprise us, and that sometimes the most profound discoveries come in the smallest packages. The last echoes of their stone tools have fallen silent in being Pua have but. The questions they raised about what it means to be human continue to escape our understanding of our own extraordinary journey through time.